Hello everyone, welcome to this video. I am going to attempt to speed run eight Q katas. Here we go, we have 11 minutes, let's go. So the first problem, reverse sequence. Um, get the number n to return the reverse sequence from n to one. Okay, so we basically just need to reverse an array and that's easy enough. We can just do uh, n dot reverse. It's built into JavaScript, let's try it. Um, no, n dot reverse is not a function. Um, Oh, never mind. <laughs> We're given the value in, and we have to get all the values uh, from that number down to one. So um, we'll have a for loop, and we'll, well, we'll need a variable. So we'll say uh, values equals an empty array, and then we'll have a for loop that goes from um, i equals in, while in is uh, greater than uh, zero, in minus minus. And then we'll just say values push in. And uh, that should give us the reversed sequence. Here we go. There we go. Awesome. One down. <laughs> Next up is count by x. So uh, this problem says, good start, good start. <laughs> Create a function with two arguments that will return an array of the first n multiples of x. Um, assume both the given number and the number of times to count will be positive numbers greater than zero. So for example, one in 10 gives us all the values that are multiples of them. Two and five gives all the values that are multiples of two and five. Okay. I think no. No, 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 no. X is the number we count by. The next number is the number of values. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we, we can keep that variable Z that they gave us. Um, but what we need to do is we need a for loop that goes uh, from uh, x, which is going to be our starting value, uh, while um, z dot length is less than n. So we want to go up to and make sure that this array is uh, equal to n. Um, and then we'll say x uh, plus equals x. So we're going to be incrementing by x on each iteration. So then we'll say z dot push. Um, the current x value. Oh no, well, well, the current i value. So then, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> then we'll do i plus equals x. So i plus equals x, uh, z dot push i. Does it work? Oh, it works. Great, great work, everyone. First try. Yes, first try. <laughs> All right, that's two down. Um, get planet name by id. Uh, get the function. The function is not returning the correct values. Can you figure out why? Get planet name three should return Earth. Okay, so get planet name ID, switch on that ID. So one, two, three. Oh, I see why. It's not working because we're not breaking. I think it's not working because we're not breaking out. Right. Do we need a break statement here? Is that how switch statements work? Is that is this the fix? Agreed. <laughs> All right, there we go. That's three down. Uh, next one: convert a boolean to a string. All right, implement a function which converts the given boolean value to its string representation. Uh, let's do it. So. Um, I should actually just be able to do b.toString, like that. Yeah, easy enough. So b is a boolean, to string turns it to a string. Dope. All right, next one. Volume of a cuboid. Ooh, this sounds tricky. I'm doing it. It's happening. Oh, I failed to mention that we tried this once, but it went horribly. So this is this is try number two. Okay, Bob needs a fast way to calculate the volume of cuboid with three values, length, width, and height. Uh, write a function that helps Bob with this calcul calculation. What's the, how do we get the volume of a cuboid? Is it just length times width time, times height? That's it, right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right, number five, down. Uh, next one, uh, reduce but, beginner, reduce but grow. Um, given a non-empty array of integers, return the result of multiplying the values together in order. For example, one, two, three, four is one times two times three times four. Okay, it says that they have to be in order, but a, a property of multiplication is it can be done in any order, but it doesn't really matter. We're gonna reduce 
we have the product and each value, and we want to return the product times the value, like that. Yeah, easy enough. Um, okay, next one. Uh, how good are you really? Number six. <laughs> uh, there was a test in your class and you passed it. Congratulations. But you're an ambitious person. You want to know if you're better than the average student in your class. You receive an array with your peers' test scores. Now calculate the average and compare your score. So return true if you're better, else false. What? Okay, let's figure out what this is. <laughs> better than the average. Okay, so you have the class points. Then you have your points. Um, you need to figure out what is the average of the class points. So that's going to be uh, the sum of all class points plus your points too. Yeah, we have to calculate the mean. Um, so we're going to sum up all the class points. Math. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. So we have each individual point. And then we have the total sum, so it's sum plus the points. That's the total plus your points, right? Because you're included in the class. So this is the sum of all the points in the class. And then we divide that by um, class points dot length plus one because we're including ourselves, right? So we need to know, are we better than that average, right? Return your points greater than the average. Wow, first try. First try. <laughs> All right, uh, next one, array plus array. Um, number seven, uh, I'm new to coding, and now I want to get the sum of two arrays. Actually, the sum of all their elements. I'll appreciate your help. Each array includes only integer numbers. All right, so what do we got to do here? Uh, we have two arrays, and we need to calculate all the values in both arrays. OK, yeah, so you've seen me do this already. Um, let's do this just to be fun. We'll create a, a sum function, which takes in an array. And then that returns uh, this array reduced to a sum. So we'll say uh, that gives us the sum in each value. And we want to return sum plus value. Um, so this, this is a function we can now pass the array into, like sum array 1 plus sum array 2, like that. Yeah, this is number 8. And that's done. Great work, everyone. Next one, will you make it? <laughs> Um, will you make it? You were camping with your friends far away from home, but when it's time to get back, you realize that your fuel is running out and the nearest pump is 50 miles away. You know that on average, your car runs on about 25 miles per gallon. There are two gallons left. Considering these factors, write a function that tells you if it is possible to get to the pump or not. What? <laughs> we'll figure it out. All right, distance to the pump, miles per gallon, fuel left. Um, so fuel left tells, and we, if we know the miles per gallon and we know the amount of fuel left, we know how many miles that we can go. So, uh, can go is going to be, uh, fuel is fuel left number of gallons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we could do MPG, the miles per gallon divided by the amount of fuel left, which told us tells us the total number of miles and we just want to return is uh, can go greater than or equal to the distance to the pump is that how that works let's go nope <laughs> expected false to equal true um, greater than not equal to On average, your car runs about 25 miles per gallon. OK, but I think they pass in the miles per gallon. Multiply. Oh, fuel left times multiply miles per gallon. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, sorry, everyone. Sorry. <laughs> all right, that one's done. Uh, all right, we have probably time for one or two more. Beginner series number two, clock. Uh, clock shows h hours, m minutes, and s seconds after midnight. Your task is to make a pass function, which returns the time converted to milliseconds. OK, so if we have hours, minutes, and seconds, we want to turn that into milliseconds. So we're just going to return um, hours times 60 is going to give us minutes, times 60 is going to give us seconds. And then we're going to add that to minutes times 60, which is going to give us seconds. 
and then we're going to add that to seconds, and then we take all of these seconds and multiply them times 1,000. Let's go. Yeah, great work, everyone. We have a minute left. Can we do one more? Uh, fake binary. <laughs> Uh, given a string of digits, you should replace any digit below 5 with 0 and any digit 5 and above with 1. Return the resulting string. Um, okay, so we want to return uh, fake bin. Um, we want to split it into an array, and then we want to uh, map it so that way we get each digit. And if that digit is greater than... 5, 5 and above. So greater than or equal to 5, then we want that to be a 1. Otherwise, it's a 0. And then we join that whole thing together on the empty string attempt. No! A uh, fake pin dot split is not a function. <laughs> um, oh, no, no, no. Why not? Why not? We're out of time. <laughs> We're out of time. <laughs> But why is fake pin dot split not a function? Strings can split, right? Oh, it was X. Oh, <laughs> oh well, we got 10 done, right? What was, what was my count? What was my number? 11? No, not including this one. Not including this one is 10, right? 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 Yes. <laughs> All right, thank you everyone for watching. This has been a speed run of 8 Qcadas. If you like what you saw, uh, tune in every Wednesday at uh, 7 p.m. GMT minus 6 where we solve katas like this. We actually don't do them this fast. We take a lot of time. We break them down. We solve them in multiple ways, but this has been fun. Uh, see you there.